in this video tutorial i am going to discuss about classification of the lipids in the previous video we had discussed about the definition of lipids and we know that definition of lipid was put forward by the blur by the blur blur was one scientist who had given the definition of the lipids blur had done second significant work in the lipids and that is blur had given the classification of lipids okay so according to blur lipids are divided or lipids are classified into three further groups so one group is simple lipid one group is simple lipids the second group is compound lipids is compound lipids and the third group is known as derived lipids it is derived lipids now we are doing a slight modification with the blur's classification and so we are adding fourth group that is the miscellaneous that is the miscellaneous lipids because some of the lipids are there which cannot be classified into these three different groups right so let's start with the simple lipids now what are the simple lipids simple lipids are the esters of fatty acid with various alcohols these are the esters of fatty acids with various alcohols with various alcohols so see the alcohol suppose this is alcohol right the, this is alcohol it binds with fatty acid it binds with fatty acid by this ester linkage by this ester linkage we call it as a simple lipids okay so alcohol as an alcohol we can have a glycerol we can have a glycerol or we can have a cholesterol or we can have a sphingol right so these are the most commonly found alcohols in the structure of simple lipids in human biochemistry right so see uh, let's take up an example of glycerol now glycerol is a three carbon compound it is three carbon compound with a three oh groups right and with all this oh group fatty acid can be bind fatty acid can make up a bond that is ester bond okay so see this is this is a glycerol this is a glycerol which is bound with three fatty acid we call it as a triacyl glycerol we call it as a triacyl glycerol and so this triacyl glycerol is an example of simple lipid okay so now let's move to the second group that is the compound lipids what are the compound lipids so compound lipids are nothing but the they are simple lipid they are simple lipids simple lipids which are covalently bound with some other group which are covalently bound with some other group okay so that means that means simple lipid is already there which is making a covalent bond with some other group now one thing you need to understand over here that simple lipid we know that simple lipid contain fatty acid and alcohol right so obviously this other group cannot be fatty acid or cannot be alcohol so if one fatty acid is bound with two alcohol you cannot consider that extra one alcohol as other group and can classify as a compound lipid no this other group must be different than the fatty acid or alcohol so what are the possibilities in human biochemistry for these other groups so other group may be a phosphate okay it may be a phosphate and when phosphate is other group we call it as a phospholipid we call it as a phospholipids phospholipids if other group is carbohydrate if other group is carbohydrate we call it as a glycolipids we call it as a glycolipids if some other group is sulfate if it is a sulfate we call it as a sulfolipids sulfolipids if that other group is a protein if it is a protein and if protein and lipids are bound then we uh, we call it as a proteolipids we call it as a proteolipids or we can also call it as a amino lipids we can also call it as a amino lipids now if in certain protein if the lipid is acting as a prosthetic group if lipids if lipids occur as a prosthetic group as a prosthetic group then that compound is given a one different name and that is a lipoproteins that is a lipoproteins so one thing you need to understand over here is that proteolipids and lipoproteins both are compound lipids but in proteolipids it is just a simple combination of proteins and lipids right but in case of lipoprotein this lipid is acting lipid has a major role and that that major role is prosthetic group as a prosthetic group to a particular protein so there is a subtle difference between lipoproteins and proteolipids that you need to understand and yes proteolipids are also known as amino lipids okay so let's consider the third group the third group that is derived lipid now what is the derived lipid as its name suggests they are derivatives of something right they are derivatives of derivatives of something so what is this something this something is this simple lipid and compound lipid so derived lipids are the derivatives of simple lipids simple lipids 
and compound lipids and compound lipids so derived lipids are derivatives of something and that something is simple lipids and compound lipids but can we call all the derivatives of simple lipids and compound lipid as a derived lipid no it comes with the condition that those derivatives must possess a characteristics of the lipids okay for example let's say when you when you hydrolyze this compound lipid let's say this phospholipid is hydrolyzed you get a phosphate so shall we call this phosphate as a derived lipid no we cannot call it as a derived lipid why because phosphate has no characteristic of a lipid now what are the characteristics of the lipid that characteristics you can find in the blur's definition okay that we had discussed in the previous video the first characteristic is about its solubility about its solubility that is they are soluble in non polar solvent and not soluble in water that means polar solvent right the second is biological utility is the biological utility they must be utilized by the biological system and third is they must be an esters of fatty acid with alcohol they have some relationship with the alcohol by the ester linkage okay fatty acid and alcohols by the ester linkage so these three characteristics defines the lipid but in a short time in a very short time we are going to break up this third rule right so let's see the examples of this derived lipids so suppose suppose this take up a example of triacylglycerol and you do the hydrolysis and so the first fatty acid uh, first fatty acid is removed so what will happen you will have a diacylglycerol so your diacylglycerol this is a example of derived lipid okay don't classify diacylglycerol as a simple lipid by just looking at the structure and say that it's a combination of alcohol and fatty acid no in biological system this diacylglycerol is derived from the hydrolysis of one fatty acid if you hydrolyze two fatty acid then you can get a monoacylglycerol monoacyl glycerol again this is a derived lipid okay if you remove all three fatty acid then you are left with the glycerol and glycerol is fulfilling this solubility criteria this biological utility criteria but it is not fulfilling this third criteria and still we keep the glycerol this glycerol as a derived lipid so remember the blur's definition is very loose one so here this is the ex uh, exception where the third criteria of the blur is not uh, not fulfilled and still you classify something as a lipid okay and that is a derived lipid so now again this cholesterol this cholesterol when this cholesterol is separated from its respective fatty acid this cholesterol can also be considered as a derived lipid again this sphingol can also be considered as a derived lipid so see derived lipid this group this particular group let me highlight it this derived lipid group is very tricky one sometime this condition is not fulfilled still we consider that group under the under the classification of lipids okay classification of lipids and what are the miscellaneous so miscellaneous lipids are the lipids which cannot be kept under simple lipid compound lipid or derived lipid and for human biochemistry only two compounds are important which should be kept under a miscellaneous and that two compounds are two vitamins vitamin e and vitamin k in non human biochemistry in non human biochemistry in certain certain like shark or mammalian liver shark or mammalian liver there is one compound that is known as squalene that is known as squalene this compound it is a hydrocarbon it is a hydrocarbon and which can be kept under a miscellaneous lipid so many many compounds are there under miscellaneous lipid but when we are studying about human biochemistry only vitamin e and vitamin k are the important ones which should be kept under the miscellaneous lipid so this was all about the classification of lipid and in future videos i am going to discuss about all these all these compounds all these the simple lipids all these various compound lipids all these various derived lipid and this miscellaneous lipids in full detail so stay tuned and if you have any query confusion or doubts please write it down in the comment section below i will happy to answer your all queries if you are not subscribed to my channel please subscribe it please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you